Hey everybody, Tom here, and today I want to teach you how to play Starship Samurai, a pretty neat, really simple uh, area control game that I actually kind of like a lot. It's it's a mix of area control with some battle, and it's really uh, pretty straightforward, so I'm excited to be playing it and to be teaching you guys how to play it as well. Uh, so what we have here is kind of the play area. On this side of the screen, you're seeing kind of the general stuff, the stuff that would be in the middle of the table. And then, of course, over here we have kind of our individual play uh, areas. If you would like to see this game set up, there is a link for a video where I teach you how to set this stuff up. It's at the bottom of the, or in the description, so go ahead and click on that if you need to. Uh, but for now, I'm going to hop over to this board. This is called the um, Alliance board, and I want to talk to you about what we're trying to do here. So around the outside edge of the board is kind of our victory point tracker, and here we have the red player and the blue player markings. And at the end of the game, the person with the most points is going to be the winner. Now there's going to be a couple of different ways to get points throughout the game, uh, but this board is going to kind of represent the main way to get uh, the points. So each of these markers down here represents, I think what they call it is a clan, maybe a class, something like that. There are different groups of people. And what we're going to try to do, so here's the red column, and the blue column. We're, one great way to get points is to influence these different groups of people. And the way that you'll see that influence is you're gonna raise these different markers up along this track, and maybe they'll even duplicate. So let's just pretend for a second that we kind of get, the red player gets the markers up here. At the end of a round, uh, there's gonna be a battle, and after the battle, we're gonna kind of look at where these markers are, and this symbol right here shows victory points. So in this kind of example, let's pretend that the round ended right here. The red player would get three points for this marker being here. They would get two points for each of these markers being here, and they'd get one point for this marker being right here. So essentially, throughout the game, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get this thing raised up, uh, or get these markers raised up, so that at the end of the round we can score a whole bunch of points for them. Um, yeah, so that's not the only way to get points, but that is a pretty uh, main way. And the way that we're going to be able to raise those markers is if you look at these cards down here that are on these planets, these are called locations, so this is a location planet and this is like a specific location, you could see right here that this is saying that if we control this location, then we're going to be able to uh, manipulate this clan. And so the reason why it kind of looks like raise or lower is if this clan is on the red track as we were showing earlier, well we could raise that up along that good track. But the blue player is going to try to lower that influence on the red track. So if we can control uh, this location, then we're going to be able to manipulate that one particular marker right there. And the way that we're going to be able to control those locations is by sending either our big carrier ship or a bunch of our fighter ships or maybe even our samurai. We're going to be able to send these over to the locations. And depending on who we have at these locations, you know, maybe the red player is going to get some people over here too. We're going to kind of evaluate who has more influence over this place at the end of the round, uh, kind of. And we're going to basically see who has the most influence, and then they're going to gain the rewards. Usually those rewards, again, are kind of raising or lowering those particular tokens. So I'll just go ahead and put these back. And that's going to bring us to talking about what happens on a turn. So the blue player is going to be our first player, that's why we have this marker right here. Uh, and on a turn, there's kind of two parts to an individual turn. And a whole bunch of turns, well four turns, are going to make up a round. And I know that, that sounds confusing, but just bear with me, it's really simple, and the design of this game keeps things really simple, and it has to do with these tokens right here. But as you enter a player's turn, the first thing you're always going to do is you're going to check each planet to see if you control that planet. So where it's the beginning of the game, uh, really straightforward, nobody controls this planet, and nobody controls this planet, but let's use this as a moment to say, if by chance you do control a place at the beginning of your turn, and control is going to come from having the most power, we'll talk obviously more about that in a second, but if you do have control of a planet at the beginning of your turn, that can be kind of impressive, and you would earn these points, or these rewards down here, so we would be able to move that green marker up on our track if, if we controlled it, and we would gain a victory point. So at the beginning of your turn, you always check to see, do you control any of the locations? And if you do, you get the rewards on the bottom of the card. Now that we've checked to see if we control, which we don't, um, really quickly, I'm just going to show you each player starts with these cards, but these are going to be like in our hand. They're secret from the other players, so I'm going to just put it upside down for now. 
Okay, so now that we've done that, we're basically going to choose to do one of these four actions, and we're going to do it as many times as the number matching our token. So this is the basic part of a turn is you're going to pick one of these number tokens, and you're going to put it on any one of these actions that you want to take. So here we have uh, the move allegiance token. So I'm going to use the number two for a second. If I choose to put the number two on the move, uh, oh my gosh, allegiance uh, action, then that means that you get a move to uh, spaces worth of these tokens down here. So being the blue player, that means that I could pick any of these tokens and go one, two, or I could go one, two. Or if these tokens were up on the red player, I could move it down. I could go one, two, or I could go one, two. But basically you get to manipulate two spaces worth of these tokens, um, either bringing them down your opponent's tracks or pushing them up your own track. If we put the number two down here on draw cards, well, there are uh, there's a whole deck of cards that look with this back, um, and they have all sorts of ways to help you in battles or on your turns. And so if I put this marker here, then I would get to draw two cards from this stack, and you have a hand limit of five cards. So if you ever draw more than five cards, you just would need to discard down. But that's what these cards are here. These are called wealth tokens, and they're gonna help you do different uh, things. We'll talk more about these soon. But basically, if you put your two right here, then that means you get to pick up two of those wealth tokens. And finally, up here, this is the action I'm going to have the blue player take, which is why I'm talking about it now. Uh, this says move up to X units. I put a two here, that means I get to move two units. So I get to pick two plastic pieces from my board and put them over on the planets. And in that way, we're starting to gain control over them. So I think I'm going to start with this. And you're going to see here on the board, we have fighter jets, which are just the regular small ones. There's eight of those. Then you have one carrier ship, and then you have two different samurais. These samurais have special abilities, and I haven't said it yet on this video, but if you've seen my channel before, I will use colored papers a lot to help you distinguish who, uh, or to make sure that you know that this is the blue player's play area. And I have also cut out these circles here uh, to help us see that these are the blue player's samurais. So those are not part of the game. Those are just things that I've added to make things a little more clear. This board is obviously part of the game. Okay, so fighter ships. If we move a fighter ship, we can just put it on there. They have a strength of one in terms of contributing to if you are influencing a planet or not. And we'll talk more about this ability down here in just a second. A carrier ship, I want to talk about that right now, uh, is going to be kind of cool because it says right here that if we move our carrier ship, it says before moving a carrier ship, you may choose up to two small ships you control that share a location with the supply, uh, sorry, or are in the supply. This area right here is called the supply, uh, with that carrier. After moving as a free order, move the chosen ships to a new location. So basically, if we choose to move this as one of our units, because we're moving the carrier, I can grab two ships from the same location or the supply here and move it with them. So I'm going to do this as one of my move actions. And I'm going to move this guy right here because the thought of having a, a victory point for controlling this spot, if, the, if I do at the beginning of my next turn, sounds really awesome. These carrier ships, I didn't show you, let me grab the card, have a power of two. So as of right now, I have one, two, three, four power over this location. If it stays like this at the beginning of my next turn, I get to move the green marker up one on my track and uh, I gain a victory point. So even though it looks like I moved three units, remember I really just moved the carrier ship and the carrier ship had those two fighter ships on it. Now I need to pick one more unit to move. I could just move one of these fighter ships to either of those locations or I could move one of my samurais. And samurais always have special abilities. So what I've done here is I've put the number which represents their power. So this guy is worth two in the same way that the carrier ship is worth two. And I've just put their name here to help me uh, see who I'm dealing with. So if I put this samurai on a location, what it says is every ship you control gains one power uh, while, uh, Shinjin, oh, while at Shinjin's location. So if I were to bring this guy over here, he would be a power of two, and it doesn't matter which of these um, seven spots I put this guy on, um, it's just there are seven places for seven different units. So if I put this guy here, I have two power over this spot. Um, probably pretty easy for the red player to take over, but I would have two influence here, and no other ships are here. If I were to put him over here, now I have one, two, three, four, five, six power, 
plus this guy remember his special ability is that you can um it's plus one to all of the other units so this was six seven eight nine i would have nine power over this location it would be really hard for the red player to take over and with that in mind, I think that's what I'm going to do. I want to really hold down this place and get those victory points. And that was basically the end of the turn. There's a couple of other small things let's talk about really quickly. And some sometimes that'll be like free action. So if we look at our fighter card here, it says as a free order. So we just did one order. And then as a free order, if we wanted to, we could attach a wealth token. Remember that little thing of tokens? I could put one of those wealth tokens under any of my fighter ships. And that fighter ship has more power for each, like one power for each of those tokens underneath it. So that's one use of those tokens. You also have a hand of cards. And the two cards that we start off with say battle, which means that you only play them during a battle. So I'm going to wait to talk about those. Um, but it's possible to have a card that says the word order. And so if you have a card with the word order across the top in the same place that this says battle, then you can also do, you can play one of those cards per turn. I'll show you more about those, uh, and that can happen either before or after you place this token. But for now, let's just move on to the red player and see what they're going to do. So the red player starts with the exact same kinds of ships. Everybody starts with the fighter ships and the carrier ships, and they have the same power. Where they differ is in their two different samurai. So let's talk about what these two different samurai do. Gozen, this samurai right here, has a power of four. You can see that here, and I wrote it on the, on the mini. But uh, this samurai says when Gozen is in a battle and again we haven't seen a battle yet the battle will happen at the end of the round after everybody has done all four actions so when Gozen is in a battle your opponents must commit and reveal their battle cards before you choose yours battle cards are still resolved in turn order we'll talk more about that but remember how we talked about how there was a battle um, essentially during a battle everybody's going to pick one card and put it face down this is saying if Gozen is involved then everyone has to put their cards face up first and then we have uh, Masu Masumuni. I don't know that word, but this guy's a juggernaut. He has a power of six, which is huge, but because he's so big, it's going to cost to move him around the board. And so this says whenever you move this guy, uh, you must spend one wealth token because he's just going to like stomp in there and do some pretty harsh things. So what I think I want to do is, oh man, it's kind of tough. I know that I want some of these wealth tokens so I can really get this guy into fight, but by not putting units on the board, I'm basically letting the blue player get this stuff here, which he probably is anyway because he has so much power here. And I'm leaving this spot empty, which means I'm not going to get these things. Yeah, so I don't know. It's a tough choice. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to use my four and I'm going to put it right here and I'm going to get four wealth tokens so that I have flexibility to move this guy around. So I'm going to come up here and I grab four wealth tokens and we just put it over here somewhere. And I know that's kind of like a stall tactic and maybe it's a bad decision. In all of my videos, I don't teach you how to play the game well, I just teach you how to play it correctly. But having said that, we're just going to say that's the end of the red player's turn. They don't have any order cards to play. Oh, do you know? Well, yeah, they don't have any order cards to play. I could, as a free action, add one of these to my fighters, but I kind of want to wait till I get my fighters out on the board first. Now it's the blue player's turn. Remember, the first thing you always do on your turn is you check your influence on the planets. Obviously, nobody's here yet, but we clearly have the most influence over this planet. And uh, you have to have more than other people. So if there was a tie, you don't get the reward. But now we do have the reward, which means we get to move the green token up and we get a point. So we're going to take the green token. This is a neutral area. They don't belong to anybody now. And we have started to influence them. So we put them one space up. And then up here at the very top is our victory point tracker. We just give ourselves one point. And now we need to pick another number and another action. And you're welcome to do the same action again with a different number. And I think I'm going to do that. I'm holding off on, I'm holding off on putting this guy out because uh, he has a power of three. But look at his ability. It says, after moving um, this guy, uh, you may destroy the weakest ship at the new location. So I'm kind of waiting for the red player to start putting people on either location and then I can drop this guy on and he's gonna you know wipe them out so I'm gonna wait on that but I think what I would like to do is why don't I go ahead and put three units I'm gonna grab three fighter jets and put them on the other planet 
and hopefully the red player will just stay away and I can control this place and if I can control this place at the beginning of my next turn then I'm going to be able to move the purple marker up and I'll get one of those special cards so that will be nice. You know what, I think the red player is going to make a really aggressive move here. They're going to use their three to move three units. The first units they're going to move is, the first unit they're going to move is their carrier ship, which is going to bring two fighter ships with them. And I know I didn't check to see if I influenced anyone, I just, no I don't, because I don't have any ships out here yet. And they're going to put them right here. And the reason why they're doing that is now the blue player doesn't have influence over this place, because the red player has one, two, three, four power, and the blue player has three. So right now the red player has power over this spot. And that was only one movement. My second movement, I'm going to move uh, the big one. So I'm going to just go ahead and discard this token, and we're going to take this guy, and we're going to tromp him right here, like that. And for my third movement, we're going to bring this guy in, like that. And I'll also point out really fast, in case you didn't watch my setup video, uh, the number of locations is equal to the number of players. So if there was a three-player game, there would be three different locations. Four-player game, there'd be four different locations to, to choose from. Now it's the blue player's turn, and if you were watching closely, you saw that the blue actually does not have influence over either of those planets anymore. The red player has four influence here, the blue player only has three. The red player has ten here, six plus four is ten. And then this guy, remember this was two, three, four, five, six, plus all of the ships get plus one, seven, eight, nine, so ten to nine. So now the blue player has got kind of some tough choices. Again, do they, do they throw some more units out there onto the board? Or do they try to get some wealth tokens or some cards to help them in their battle? It's always tough to choose. I think what they're going to do is they're going to just keep throwing. They're going to just throw as many units on there as they can. So they're going to start off by putting moving four units. They're going to put everyone else on the board right now. And the first thing that they're going to do is... Oh, I don't know if there's going to be enough spaces... Um, well, dang, here's, okay, here's, here's something to consider that I'm now struggling with. When moving ships, you can only put a ship on a place if there's an available spot. If there's not an available spot, you can't put any ships there. But, if you put a samurai down, samurais have a natural ability to where, um, any samurai, when they come into a space, so let's say that the blue player is here, if a samurai comes in, then they knock out the weakest ship on the board, and that might be your ship, but right now, if there's a tie for weakest ship, like these, uh, then you can knock out the weakest one and place your guy there. Okay, so that's what happens when it's full. This guy's ability says that even if it's not full, you put it here, you can knock out the weakest ship. So kind of what I'm thinking is, I was, my original plan was to put this guy on the other location, and I still can, the thing is that if I do that, first of all, that looks fun. If I do this, then there's no weakest ship to knock out except for my own ship. So I don't really want to do that necessarily. So let's, it, the order doesn't matter here. What I'm saying is that I can't really use his special ability as well as I would have liked. So two of my units that I'm going to move is I'm going to put one guy here. And then even with any samurai, I could have stomped this guy in here uh, like that. But, oh, do you know what we could do? So this was one unit two units knock this guy out and then he could take out another one. I think that works. And so when we take out these ships, they go into the player's graveyard. So we've moved two of our units. Let's grab these other guys and we'll put them out as well. We're going to put one here and one here. Now the red player has lost influence over both of those planets, so they're not getting their rewards. Clearly the blue player is controlling this space. And over here, the red player still has 10. The blue player had the original nine Plus, this guy is a 10, and remember, he's adding another one for that ship, too. So he's actually at 11 right now. So the red player has some tough choices. Um, for example, he could use his two move actions. Like, I could use the number two and move some units, and I could move both of these samurais over to this board, and that would knock out two blue ships, and I would have control over this. So it's kind of a question of, do I really want red to spend time and energy... Um, getting control over this location or not. I, my other fighters can't go anywhere. All of the spaces are full. Or do I want to kind of bulk myself up and be prepared for the battle that happens after everybody's taken their four actions? I think what I need to do is probably prepare for that. So I'm going to use my two and draw two cards. So two cards. We've got, well, let's go look over here. 
And our two cards are a battle card and an order card. Okay, so this battle card I could use while we're fighting, and it says if the only unit you control at this location is a samurai, uh, then you gain four power. Awesome. Let's look at the other two battle cards. This one says gain three power. This one says gain a wealth token or draw an action card, and then you put this card back in your hand. Um, or we have this order card, <clears throat> which says for the cost of destroying two ships, I can move up to two clan markers, uh, move up to two clan markers, two spaces each. Do you know what? I think, I remember how I mentioned earlier that you can play one order card either before or after you've done your order action. I'm going to do this. When we destroy two ships, you could destroy them from your supply or from the board, and you just put them into your graveyard. And since I'm probably not going to get these ships out anyway, let's go ahead and just destroy two of those ships, and then we'll discard this card. And now I get to move two clan markers, two spaces each, and they could be any of these markers at all. So I, like for example, I could move this guy one, two, or I could just move any of these ones up two. Uh, what I think I probably will do is go. Let's bring this guy one, two, and let's bring this guy one, two, just to pull it away from the blue player. And that's going to be the end of the red player's turn. All right, it's going to be time for the blue player's final action. Checking over here, the red player might regret this, but the blue player does control this location, so they're going to move the purple and gain a card. And because they still control this one, they're going to move the green up one and, uh, or down one, we'll talk, uh, and gain, um, what's it called? <laughs> a victory point. So the blue player's going to grab the purple, move it up one, they're going to gain a card. Oops, that was a lot messier than I intended it to be. And then they're going to move the green one down one because it's on the other player's current spot. And they're going to gain another victory point. Oh, we need this card. But Okay, so they have the same two cards that we talked about with the red player. Again, just to review, they have the battle card that adds three power. And they have the one to draw a, a wealth token or an action card. And then you keep this card in your hand. Or uh, they have this War Factory order. Move all units from your unit graveyard to your supply. Move up to two units you control. Wow, that would have been awesome if the red player had that, but the blue player doesn't have anything in their graveyard. So they're just going to hold on to that order to use a different time. And I think the blue player... Oh man, there's a lot of different things they could do. They know they have two tough battles, so they could draw a battle card. What I think they're going to do instead is to just move one clan marker up to X spaces. Oh, and... I'm so dumb, I'm sorry. I just realized in my explanation, I'll annotate this, you can move one clan marker up to that many spaces, so you can't really divide that out. And what he's going to do is he's going to move this one up one. I'm going to really try to make a push to get this thing up here. The red player still probably can't move a unit. Again, the only unit I would be able to move is one of my samurais, and that is an option, but the blue player's really made a push with all of these pieces. What I think I want to do instead is let's just draw another card. So I'm just going to grab it. What do we got? A battle card. If you control at least one samurai mech at this location, destroy one enemy unit at this location. Oh, that's cool. It would cost us two victory points, is what that's saying right here. And I don't have two victory points to spend, so I can't use this just yet, but that would be a nice surprise attack to hold on to. And with the red player finishing that, now what happens is it's the end of the round, so we're going to have a big battle over the two locations. So what I'm going to do is, doing a battle as one person playing two people is going to be a little bit tricky, but I promise I'm going to do my very best to make the choices I think that the characters or the players would make. And I'm also going to use these cubes to kind of help me remember who is playing which card. So at the beginning of a battle, basically what happens is each player is going to take their hand of cards, and they're going to play one card down, face down. Okay, so here's the blue player's deck of cards. They're going to look through, and probably mentally they're counting up. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They've got eight power to red's two. So, I mean, they could play this gain plus three, but that seems a little, like, overkill. We probably want to hold on to that. This is an order card, so we can't use that. The blue player is probably just going to put this card face down like this. Okay, that's a pretty safe card to play. Then the red player is going to look and they're going to see, is there any way that they can influence this battle to the point where they can win? 
adding three power isn't going to do it because again it was what was it one two three four five six seven eight eight to two so that's not going to win them the battle well we, we talked about that with the blue one uh, this says if your only unit in, in this location is a, is a samurai, then you gain four power. We don't have a samurai here. If you control at least one samurai at this location, again, we can't use this because we can't afford it. So I think the only thing that we can probably do is this one. So we would put this card face down. And once everybody has played their cards face down, then you go ahead and reveal. And then we're going to tally up and decide what we're doing here. So... Uh, the battle is going to go to the blue player, more on that in a second, but the red player needs to decide, do they want a wealth token or an action card? Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab an action card. And then this is going back, or this is going back in their hand and they're grabbing this new card. So for one wealth token, that's the cost, we have a new order. Attach this card to a location. When a player moves a unit to this location, she must destroy one unit in her supply. Uh, at the end of a player's turn, she may discard two action cards to discard this card. Otherwise, uh, discard this card at the beginning of the battle phase. Oh, interesting. So these just kind of sit on the planet and shoot people that try to come in. Uh, that would be a great thing to put down once you already have a bunch of influence on that spot. So these just go back into the red player's hand. The blue player, um, I'm going to have them grab a wealth token. And again, most of these cards that you play are discarded. This one just comes back into your hand is what it says. So we've got our wealth token. This comes back in our hand. So we've always got that one card. So what happens at the end of a battle, the blue player won. Uh, what happens is that they're going to earn these rewards. So they're going to move purple up one, and they're going to gain an action card, and they're going to get five victory points. So they're going to be up to seven. New card, it's a battle card, gain plus one power for each unit you control at this location. Awesome. Okay, so they've got that. Finally, they're going to take this card and put it face down in front of them. Now, another way to earn points that I haven't talked about yet is by having unique icons like this. So we'll see in the other one. Uh, there's either one icon here, two, three, or four. And by collecting different kinds of these icons, you're going to get more points at the end of the game. Let's talk about this when we have more cards. But yeah, that is one way to get a couple more points near the end of the game. Uh, but we're going to get this card um, face down in front of us. And what's going to happen is the winning player is going to take all of their units back and the losing players are going to keep their units here. So all of these guys are going to go back into um, the supply of the player. So we'll just go ahead and stack them in right here. They return victorious and they eat brownies and ice cream. And that's it for the first location. We're going to go do the exact same thing on the other location. Let's take our cubes with us. Let's see, I think I had red on that side, blue on that side. All right, now this battle could be more exciting because it's a lot tighter. Um, and the red player, remember the red player has this samurai here, which says that the blue player has to play, or all of their opponents, have to play their cards first. So if there were multiple people, uh, what would happen is everyone plays their cards first down except the red player, and then they turn it up, and then the red player would play theirs. But for now, the blue player has to look and decide. It's 11 to 10. This is very close. So, looking at their cards, I think probably what they want to do is adding this would get them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 more power. So they're going to play this card. But remember, to play this card, they're going to have to pay one of the wealth tokens. So these are going here, and then put this up here. And now the red player has to see if they can beat 16, I think it is. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then this guy adds 1 to all of the ships. 8, 9, 10, 11. And each piece is also one more power. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And the red player has 10. I don't know that the red player can do that, so let's just review their cards. Uh, if the only unit you control at this location is a mech, gain four. We don't have that, so I'm just going to put it face down. Uh, we don't have two victory points to do this card, so that's not going to work. Gain three. I mean, we could, but we're not going to win the battle. Um, this is an order card, not a battle card. And this is the card that we're already used to. So I'm going to hold on to this. We're just going to play this one again and hope that this is going to keep buffing us up. Um, and I'll just return these cards to the red player. So with this done, the blue player has won the battle. And really quickly, let's have the red player go ahead. And they're going to draw 
another battle card. Well, should they? They have a hand limit of five, and they have five cards with this in their hand, so they would have to discard one of their cards, but I kind of think I like their cards, so I'm going to draw a wealth token instead. So wealth token, this card is back in their hand. So the blue player is going to move the green marker up one. They're going to get one victory point plus five more victory points. And I just need to discard this card right there. So we move green up one and they're going to get six victory points, which is going to put them at 13. We bring this card back and we add it to their face down cards. And you can see we have two different unique kinds of locations in the rule book on page six. No, what? Yeah. Eight, eight, page eight. Uh, it shows you at the end of the game if you have, you'll get three points if you have two different kinds of locations, six points if you have three kinds, and nine points if you have four kinds. So just keep that in mind. Finally, all of the, oops, <laughs> sorry, loser, all of the losing pieces are going to stay. I'll move these cubes out of the way so it's prettier. And all of the winning pieces need to come back to their planet for brownies and ice cream. Oh, there we go. And they come back into the supply like that. And that's the end of the battle phase. After the battle, what we do is we're going to look at these markers and give people rewards for it. So the red player is going to get one point. Yay! The blue player is going to get two points and one of these wealth tokens. Then we need to draw new locations. So we're going to draw two new locations. The top one is going to go right here. And the next one is going to go right here. And you can see the red player is starting off by controlling these places. So I know things look kind of dire right now, and I'm probably playing the red player very stupidly. Um, but they, they are going to start off the next round a lot stronger. After that, we kind of just are going to keep cleaning up. We're going to remove all of these order markers. And anything that was in your graveyard is going to come back into your supply. So these come over here, two, three, four, and no, no things in the graveyard, so we're good there. And finally, we'll pass the first player token clockwise around the board or up to the red player. And they're going to be the ones that lead off the new round. They are controlling this spot here, by the way, really pretty artwork in this whole game, so I love it a lot. So they're going to move this token up too, and they're controlling this space, so we're going to move this token up too. And for the red player's turn, their task is going to be to really hold on to those locations. It'd be awesome to get those tokens shooting up the track um, as much as possible this turn. So I think we're going to go, oh no, not four wealth tokens. I'm going to throw four fighter jets. One, two, three, four. And I'm putting them at this location just because obviously it needs a little help here. And then as a free action, I'm going to load each of those jets up. I'm going to do this part. So just to review, because it's been a while, uh, as a free order, you may attach a wealth token to a fighter ship you control. A fighter ship gains plus one power for each thing attached to it. So I happen to have these four wealth tokens left over. Let's bring them in. And I could distribute these however I want to, but I think it makes sense to just put one. Well, do you know what? I want to leave an empty one. <clears throat> In case the blue player brings, like in case they fill up the space, I want to have a weakest jet to take out, um, if that makes sense. Like, uh, I don't want them to take out one of my powerful ones, is what I'm saying, but I kind of want them to be, no, yeah. So I'm just going to bring this back to the board. Well, mm, no, I'm putting it on, just so that it looks nice and even and can, I don't really know what I'm doing. The blue player doesn't have anybody on the board yet, and so it's kind of a tough question of what exactly we should do, but probably we need to start putting people on there, so at the very least we can be battling, so let's put four units on the board as well. I uh, think we'll move both of these. I'm going to put, okay, let's do this one at a time. Um, Shinji, no, yeah, which, Motada, Mo, Mototada, uh, after moving he can destroy the weakest ship, so this is kind of where, this is was my place of hesitation with the red player. I probably shouldn't have re-put this in here, so this guy's going to come in here and destroy the weakest ship, that could be any of these ships, so he's going to just destroy this one. 
And anytime a ship comes back to either the graveyard or the supply with a wealth token underneath it, that wealth token just gets discarded. So I'll do that. And I'm going to put this guy on the other space. And by other space, I mean on the other planet. So he's coming over here. And then I'm going to bring this carrier ship as well as, so this will be move number three, and then move number four will bring another one here. And where Shin, Shinjin gets, you know, those extras for having a lot of ships, I'm bringing all of those ships to this base here. Now let's check his power. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So they did take control over this spot. Red doesn't have control there. But they do have control here, so we'll move this up to... That was in this stack somewhere. 1, 2. Red, yeah. I'm not exactly sure what to do now. I don't know that I need to send more fighters out to that other location. I've got five cards, and if I rem... Oh, that Alexa. Um, I've got five cards, and I feel pretty good about them. Oh my gosh. Alexa is so crazy. Okay, so we have this order here. Attach this card to a location when a player moves the... Oh man, that would have been a smart thing to do. Um, I could do that, but I don't have any wealth. Maybe what I got to do is reload up on my wealth token. So I'm going to use this three to gain three wealth tokens. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one of those tokens. Oh my gosh. Spend one of those tokens. I did not plan that shot very well. And let's just review. When you attach this card to a location, when a player moves a unit to this location, she must destroy one unit in her supply. At the end of the player's turn, she may discard two action cards to discard this card. Uh, otherwise, discard this card at the beginning of the battle phase. So yeah, let's get this in. It's kind of early enough. I probably should have put it out earlier, but we have it now. I'm not sure how helpful this card will be since there aren't that many ships in the supply and there's only really these two spaces open, but we're learning how to play uh, the game and this is now not centered. But while we're here, the blue player does not have control here. They do have control here, as we counted before, that was an 11. So they move this token twice, one, two, puts it down here. And for their turn, they're not scared of those cannons. So they are going to go ahead and move two units. They're going to put two fighters back into that field. And remember, when a player moves a unit to this location, uh, she must destroy one unit in her supply. And please correct me if I'm wrong, since I'm moving two ships, like they move one at a time, um, I think that I have to destroy two ships. Like for each of those moves, I have to destroy one, I believe. But now that the spaces are full, I'm not, I don't know that I necessarily need those other ships. Checking control, we definitely have control here. We still don't have control here. So this goes up to again. I'm half tempted to bring my Gozen Samurai this way and stomp out one of those uh, ships. And the reason why I was thinking that is because I kind of wanted to leave him alone because uh, I remembered I had this card. If the only unit you control at this location is a Samurai, gain four power during a battle. Um, but that would just, you know, even out. I wouldn't be doing much. And I, I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on that other battlefield. So I don't know that that's worth it. But before the blue player's turn, it might be worth it to uh, move an allegiance, uh, move allegiance, right? So move one clan marker. So I kind of want to keep tugging at these guys, bring them back too, because I know the blue player is going to be lowering that two at the beginning of their turn. And if I don't do anything about it, they're just going to keep crawling up here and giving the blue player more points. Speaking of, to launch the blue player's turn, they just control here. So they do lower this twice. And I think they're going to follow the red player's lead, and they're going to move that uh, three times. So they're going to go one, two, three, and then at the beginning of their turn, next time, likely, uh, that's going to go up two more spaces. So, ooh. And as a free action, we're going to move... Uh, I keep touching this because I'm so angry about that glare, but I can't seem to fix it. So you're going to... I should do shadow puppets. Uh, we're going to put this wealth token on one of those fighters. So this will go under here, why not? Um, the reason why I'm doing that is because this is currently, well, it, before that token, it was five to eight. Um, so now it's six to eight, which I think puts the blue player in better position to maybe win that location. But that'll be the end of the blue player's turn for the red player's turn, still controlling this. But the token is as high up as it's gonna go. I think, wait, do I have four or five? One, two, three, four. 
Yeah, let's spend, oh, let's spend our last action drawing one more card. Um, an order, attach this card to a location. Units cannot be destroyed at this location. Um, only units with three or more power can move to this location. At the end of a player's turn, uh, she may discard two action cards to discard this card. Otherwise, discard this card at the beginning of the battle phase. Hmm, hmm, okay. Um, interesting. All right. Neat. Okay, cool. Got it. That would be a great card for the red player to attach to this location, maybe, or, or a location with, with these guys in it already, because the other samurai can't be added. So that's something we're thinking about. Okay, what am I talking about? Uh, blue player uh, controls this. So that's up to... Let's see, how many cards do they have? They've got three cards... Um, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, I'm thinking these cards, I would like one more card, I'm not intending to, um, just copy everything the red player's doing, uh, I really am trying to have my own brain, okay, gain two at this location, gain the reward at this location, oh, that's cool, okay, that's, that is the end of the turns part of the round, so it's time to start the battle. This card gets discarded, and we'll put the red and blue cubes there so that I can remember what I'm doing. All right, let's take a look. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess I could have done two times four. That's too much work. Eight to six. Uh, red player lays down first because they're the first player. Um, okay, no, we can't put down the order. Yes, the rest are battle. Okay, I can't do this battle card because it uh, requires victory points, which I don't have. Um, if the only unit you control is a mech, nope, we can't do that. And so we probably want to do our plus three on this one, I'm thinking. Okay, so we're going to put that down. That's going to give them um, an 11 power there if they can manage it. Next up is the blue player who does not know what that card is. Okay, that's an order. No. Um, battle, battle, battle. Okay, so right now they're at uh, six, two, one, two, eight. Sorry, I keep forgetting. And so probably what they would do, I think that this would be the card because I don't know if they think that they can win this. Obviously, with two, it would be between these two, really. So they might think that they can win with three, but it's hard to know what the red player would do. But it would be awesome if they could gain this reward and lower the token by two, uh, even if they lose. So, yes, let's do that card there for the blue player. And then they reveal the red player uh, is going to win this. But really quickly, first of all, the blue player is going to lower that. And something that I didn't really consider is the fact that because the red player won this, um, as we resolve the rewards of this, they're just going to be raising that back up and earning five victory points. Finally, oh no, we're up to six. Yay, six. So we can go ahead and discard both of these cards. Get the cubes. Oh, we'll get those in a second. And this needs to go to the red player as well as all of these. But the wealth tokens are going to be discarded first. Okay, so let's take our ships and our turtle. So turtles going over here, and our ships are all going right there. Sure. Okay, so for the next battle, it is 11 to 4. I, can't, I hope we can do this. Okay, no order. If you control at least one samurai mech at this location, I would love to do this card. Because I could destroy that guy. Um, I, yeah, so I'm planning on this. That one won't work. I don't want that one. Okay, so we're going to go for this card here, and then the blue player is, can't do an order, let's have them do the plus three, I think. Okay, so that's the blue player, and then we reveal, okay, if you control at least one samurai mech at this location, destroy one enemy unit, I think they would destroy this guy. Uh, because not only is that going to get rid of these two points, but it's going to get rid of the extra point that all of those fighters have. So I'm putting that in the blue player's graveyard. And then the blue player gains three. 
So the red player is 10, the blue player is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus 3 is 8. So the red player did manage to get a win here. They'll lower that from the blue player by 2. And they'll gain a victory, so another 5 points puts them at 11. These cards get discarded, we'll move the cubes. Uh, these come back to the red player. So we'll put them up here. We've got this guy down here. And let's just go ahead and reset. So I'll move these tokens off. Oh, they're not going in order. And our graveyard ships come back. And same for the blue player. I don't know, I'm just so OCD. I just really want these. Okay, and then these guys come back. Let's go ahead and gain our rewards. So the red player is gonna get five points for that one. And then one point for that one. The blue player is going to get uh, four points for those, one, two, three, four, and one wealth token for that guy. So it's a lot closer than we thought that it would be. Next up, we're going to grab two location cards, oh my gosh, two location cards. Top one goes here on location one, and the other one is these temples, all right. So this is to move the marker and then to gain a wealth token. Pass the first player token. Blue is starting us off. And they're controlling both places, so this one's gonna need to go up two. And it's that same token that goes up one, so that's three, and they gain a wealth token. Let's see, this is gonna be, uh, wait, what am I doing? Oh yeah, one, two, three. This one goes up here, and a wealth token. And really quickly, I just realized that the blue player should have played their card down first because of Gozen being in that second battle. Uh, I just totally forgot. So I will annotate that and I acknowledge it. Let's move on. Okay, do I have any orders? I do have an order. Let me review that order. Uh, move all units from your unit graveyard to your supply. Uh, move up to two units you control. Okay, so the question is, do I just continue with that strategy of just flooding the field with people? I guess part of me says, why not? Um, like, I could just flood that whole everything. Like, I've only got four units left. I don't, let's try it. Strategic, strategic genius here, everybody. Um, and this guy's going out. I'm going to put this guy here where there's lots of ships, and we're just going <laughs> to flood it up. And then I'll put this one on the other space like that. Let's just quickly look at the numbers. So this is three, four, five, six, seven there. And over here, oh my gosh, it's a lot. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. <laughs> okay, here's what I think the red player is gonna do. I'm gonna have them move three units. The first unit they're gonna move is a carrier and they're gonna bring two ships with them. And they're gonna fill up these spaces here. After that, they're gonna bring this guy in. And remember, ships can't enter if there are no empty spaces, but samurai can. They just take out one of the weakest ships, so they're just going to take out this blue ship. And with that same line of thinking, we're going to bring this guy in. Oops, no, I need to pay uh, one of these wealth tokens, and he's going to go into the other location. So let's wipe that guy out. And I think as a free action, let's put this out too. There we go. Now this location is uh, six, seven, eight, nine, two, six. And this location over here is six. I, I still don't think that they got to six because there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, so not close. We just knocked out two points worth, but uh, it's a work in progress. But that does mean that the blue player gets that second location's reward, which was one of those and a token. And there's not a lot that they can do out on the battlefield. They could move one samurai from the second location over to the first here. They don't want to bring their samurai from the first location over here because they would destroy one of their own ships. But they could bring this guy over here and that would take out that red ship. Um, but I don't know that they really need or want to do that. Let's see, they could, um, we've only got two cards. Okay, let's draw, well, do I wanna draw three cards? Maybe I should be smarter. I'm gonna move Allegiance. And what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this guy, either one of these, I don't know which one, um, up, one, two, three, like that. 
Let's see, the red player has got these cards. This card isn't really gonna help me out right now. Let's have them draw two battle cards. I'm just reaching around. Oh, it's another one of those. I don't, I don't want, it's not helpful for me right now. It might be helpful in the future. Uh, move one samurai mech you control to this location. Oh, that could be helpful as we uh, go from like the first battle to the second battle, actually. That could be really helpful. Okay, that's nice. What's that going to cost? Two. Okay, so I've got to get some wealth tokens. But sorry, with all of that excitement, at the beginning of the red player's turn, I forgot to give them this. So this is the red player going one, two, like that. And then at the beginning of the blue player's turn, because they still control the second location, they're going to raise that one and take a wealth token. And they might as well draw two cards to get ready for the battle reaching. Oh my gosh. Okay. So they've got Betrayal uh, for three points. Move one clan marker on an opponent's branch of the um, alliance track up to six spaces. Wow, that's a good one. Especially for that one token that's so far up there on the, on the, on the track. Um, order. Choose a location. Destroy up to two of the weakest ships at... The chosen location, move up to two ships you control to that location. Ooh, that's pretty good, but looking at the board, the two weakest ships are these two here, and so that wouldn't work. Unless I, unless I put a bunch of, if I put some power under here, then I could destroy both of those. Ooh, that's not bad thinking. And over here, all of the blue player ships are worth two because of that guy. So maybe that is what I should do, actually. That would be kind of a good move. Oh, but I don't have any cards. Oh, I don't have any ships to replace the dead ships with. And my two ships are there in the graveyard. So maybe what I should do is move all units from your graveyard. Move up to two that you control. I have to do these on separate turns. Oh, man. I got to empty out that space. And then that's move up to two you control. Okay, so maybe what I should do as remember these order cards can happen before or after this order. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pay one token and discard this. And then I'm going to move these to the graveyard and I just can't put them on the board yet. Okay, the red player still controls this place. So this is going one, two. And... If I remember correctly, I needed to gain four wealth tokens to get ready for that big battle, right? Right. One, two, three, four, and I have four. No, I do have five cards. Okay. The blue player still controls this one. Two steps forward, one step back kind of a thing. And I think before they do anything, we were going to do this order. Choose, so I'm paying two wealth tokens. Okay, uh, oh, I want you to know that I tossed those and they totally made it. Okay, uh, choose a location, destroy up to two of the weakest ships. Oh, before I do that, as a free action, I'm going to buff up that one ship like that. Okay, so these each have a power of two. And yes, oh, that is a really powerful order. Okay, that doesn't matter. We're, we're doing this because I wanted to. All right, so we choose a location. We're going to destroy up to two of the weakest ships at the location, and then we're going to move two ships we control in. So let me just discard that card. I'm bringing these two over. Uh, this is definitely one of the weak ones, so I'm just putting that in the red graveyard, and then I could destroy either one of those. I don't know that it matters. I'm just discarding that wealth token, destroying this, and we put these two in place like that. So now this is six two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Woo! And then, do we have what we need for battle? We only have one battle card. It's kind of our weak one. Uh, let's move an allegiance token. Um, let's move this one up. That was a great move by blue, because red can no longer control this. They have an uphill battle ahead of them, and so... I think even though I've got five cards, I'm going to draw one more card and discard a weak one if I don't like it. Move one clan. Oh, same thing as before. Move one clan marker um, on an opponent's branch of the alliance track up to six spaces. Yeah, well, I definitely don't need two of these defense shields, so I'm going to go ahead and discard that. I wish I had gotten a battle card, but it is what it is. 
Okay, so that was the last of the orders. The blue player is the first player, but also I am going to remember this time that they have to play a card because they have this. Um, so they might as well play this card. I mean, they have it and they would only gain things from it. Um, and so the red player knows that the blue player is going to uh, just get the stuff back. Um, but also they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine to red six. So as we look at the red cards, we can't do an order, can't do an order. Um, we can't do this one because we have that ship there too. Oh man. Do we move? There's no way that I can win that other battle. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to play this card here. Um, and I am paying the two wealth tokens for that. Okay, so the reason why I'm doing this is because now I can move the samurai mech, which is also going to uh, use this one because it's the big juggernaut. Again, even if I played that that four card, this is this is too much. What was this like thirteen or something like that? So I'm going to bring this guy over, stomp out one of those ships. I'm just putting it in the graveyard, and uh, we can then beat them because we've got twelve. They've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Okay, so the red player did manage to win this battle. Yay us. I'm going to discard these. Claim the reward. So this comes down two, and we got five points. Which means... Oh, I'll get those cubes out of the way. Which means that we're going to claim this, and these guys are going to come back to place. Which halfway sucks, because... Uh, the blue player is going to start off with all that power over there again, but that's okay. Um, here, while we're here, I'm going to clear these off, bring these in. I realize I'm halfway jumping the gun, but we already know how the other battle is going to look. I forgot about... Where, what was that card? Where was that one card that costs two... Didn't I have a card that cost two power? What did I do to that? I don't remember. Or like, they cost two victory points. Something about a samurai. Did I just discard that? I have no clue. It wasn't this one. I just barely got that. I have no idea. Anyway, looking at these, we have a one, two, and a three. So we just need a four. I'm going to keep my eyes out for that. And in case you were wondering, it was this card. I don't remember if I lost two points for that. I feel like I didn't. I don't remember losing two points for that. So just to be safe, let me do that. And I'll, I'm at a point where I can go back and check. So I, I might adjust that if needed, but I'm super sorry. Okay. Oh, look, you can see how I disregarded these cubes. I put them in the wrong place. Okay, blue wins this, so they just are going to um, win all of the stuff. So this is going up one. We gain a wealth token. All of these things come back. Oh, I forgot to give me five points. Silly, silly me. Um... Okay, so many things in my hand. This is here, this is here. That's cleared off. Let's see, what have we got? We have a one, two, and a three as well. Okay, neat. Oh, and only one battle card. All right, so five points for that victory. Puts us down here at 24. And now we need to evaluate the points on the board. So red is gonna get six points. One, two, three, four, five, six. Blue is going to get two wealth tokens, as well as four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. New location here is going to be this one. New location here is this one. And we pass the first player token to the red player. And we're ready to go. Red doesn't control either location. So for the red player to have a shot here, I think they're going to have to get a little aggressive. I'm going to move three units to start off, and I'm going to start off with my carrier, who's going to carry two fighter ships, and they're going to go in right here. And with those in place, I'm going to bring in, um, oops, I'm going to bring in Gozen, I think, yeah. And when he comes in, he's going to stomp out this blue ship, send him to the uh, graveyard. So he's here, we'll make that very clear. And finally, let's spend that wealth token to get this guy on the board. 
And I'm going to try to hold my ground firmly on this side of things. Now to start the blue player's turn, notice that I think they've lost control. This is two, three, four, uh, eight, and now the blue player is at seven. So they didn't quite maintain control of the fortress. So obviously the big question here is, are they going to just send people out or... Um, do I want to get some more? I guess I could wait to get battle cards. Let me just quickly remember, I need a four location. This one's a four, so that's good. Maybe what he'll do is he's going to just go gun-ho over there. So we're just going to take our carrier with two fighters. We're going to take, um, so that's one, two, three, four. We're going to take all of these units over to that location. So, uh, all of these here. Something, something like that. We've filled it up like that. And that's going to be two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen into <laughs> six. If he can hold on to it. But to start the red player's turn, they do still have control over here by one. And so we're going to raise that up. Uh, two like that. And I think the trick here is going to be to figure out how to get control of that second planet. Um, the betrayal's not going to do it. I don't think that this is going to work for us. Um, I should have put that there last turn. I just wasn't thinking, and I don't have any more wealth tokens, so that's dumb. I just forgot about that. So, um, oh man, this is tough. Seems like I could use some more effective cards, hopefully some effective cards to help me out. So let's just draw two cards and see if that will work and then I'll have to discard one. So two cards here. In order, choose a location. Each of your opponents, oh, each of your opponents that controls one or more units at the chosen location must destroy one of her units at that location and if she can, discard one action card. Oh, that's good. And oh, gain five. That's great too. Okay, so I do want to keep these two I keep forgetting this card, so I'm going to get rid of this card. So I'll just discard that. And the question is, do I want to do that order right now? And if I do, which, where do I want to do it? Because um, you're only going to destroy one unit, but also one card. That could be helpful because the blue player only has one card in their hand. If I make them destroy a unit here, they're going to lose two ships, which is great. Um... I could maybe later fly a ship down into there. And if I make them destroy a unit here, they're just going to be able to refill that spot. Uh, and it, it will get rid of two points worth, so they'd be down to 11 to my six. Well, that could be worth it, actually. I don't know that, yeah. I don't think that they would spend a turn just to fill that one spot. So I'm going to use this, which means I just destroy a ship, either from the supply or from the board. And that's what we're going to do. Each opponent that controls one or more units at location two has to destroy one of her units and uh, discard the action card. So here's the action card. This is this one getting destroyed. Oh, that's perfect timing. That betrayal card is crazy. And we'll just get rid of one of these ships. I'm putting it in the graveyard. The blue player still has comfortable control over this region, so we'll raise that up by two. And with a serious lack of cards, this is going to be tough to win the battles, because who knows? I mean, obviously the blue player doesn't know what the red player has. I just turned those cards upside down. Uh, three. Let's pick up three action cards to be safe. Okay, what do we got? We've got an order. You may destroy up to two units in your supply. Choose a player. For each unit you destroy, the chosen player must either pay you two wealth tokens or destroy two units. Oh, wow. So that could force them to destroy four ships. That's pretty good. I'm giving up a victory point for it, but all right. Uh, next up, pay a wealth token. Gain three power. If you lose this battle, move up to three ships you control in this location uh, after the victor has removed her units. Okay, so you can fill in that spot if you lose. Just to, okay, okay, all right. That's a battle card. In order, move up to two clan markers, up to two spaces each. That's good, too. Um, in fact, well, oh, they only have one of these. So I don't know. It's kind of tempting to do this card. It's going to cost a victory point, and we only have one ship in our graveyard, so I'm not sure, or in our supply. 
So I'm not sure that I want to do this now. I want to do that when it's really going to hurt. But moving these clan markers would be great to get some points at the end of the round. Oh, but I'd have to destroy two ships, but maybe it's worth it. Okay, I'm going to destroy it. Yeah, because I just, mm, I don't know. This might be dumb strategically, but I'm just thinking about keeping those clan markers moving up. Uh, so I'm going to destroy that one. They probably feel comfortable destroying another one because they have such a strong hold. I think they're still at nine to six, probably. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, nine. Okay, so now we can discard this and move two clan markers up to two spaces. Let's bring this one all the way up and this one up two spaces like that. And then at the end of the round, they could get muchos points. So red still has this location. So it's going up two. And let's look at our battle cards, figure out what we need. We're going to need wealth tokens. Yo. Okay. I might want to do this card too. Okay. So first things first, let's grab uh, four wealth tokens. So I got one, two, three, four. Okay. And then for our order, let's spend, oh my gosh, I'm making a mess. Let's spend three points. Uh, to move one clan marker on an opponent's track uh, six spaces. So, yep, we'll do that. Okay, I'm going to bring one of these lower ones. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. But I need to not forget one, two, three. That cost me three points, but hopefully it'll be worth it if I can keep that there. Blue still has control here, so we'll raise that up. And they are pretty ticked off about that sudden but inevitable betrayal because they totally had that same card ready to use and they just didn't get the chance to use it. But, um, all right. Oh, yeah, they can't do that. So, okay. So they're going to hold on to these. So instead, I think we might want two more cards. These battles aren't looking good and red could really kick some trash. So two more cards. Here we go. Ooh, gain three wealth and two points. That's great. Okay. Propaganda, move all of the clan markers. <clears throat> Sorry, let's try that again. Move all clan markers on all of your opponent's branches of the alliance track up to two, up to one space. Wow. Or move all clan markers on your branch of the alliance track two spaces each. Woo. Okay. That's interesting. In fact, I kind of want to do that just as a vengeance. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's do that. I don't know. There might be a better time to do this. I'm going to spend those, discard this. And I think if there were more players, lowering everybody else's would be good. But where there's only us, raising is probably even better. So we were, it's uh, raising all of these up by two. So that puts that there, that puts that there. Two, two. Yeah, I think that's really probably the best way to go there. This is already all the way up for the red player's turn. So instead, um, what am I doing? I think I'm going to move an allegiance marker. And while I'm here, I should point out that after this round, we're going to have two more rounds because there's four more cards. So the, the game's going to end when those cards run out after, you know, that whole round. And we only have battle cards, so no more orders there. But do I want to buff up my two fighters? I think for our battle... Yeah, let's do. Okay, for a free action, I'm going to add these. I just want to play it safe here. So we'll just bulk all of that up. For the blue player's turn, they do control this, but that's already raised all the way up. So thinking about their battle, do they have enough stuff? Um, we don't have ships that I'm willing to destroy for this thing right now. So for our one... Let's also move an allegiance marker. Let's just get this guy all the way up here. That's going to bring us to our battle. Red is the... Oh, that is not centered. Oh, well, get over it. Okay, red is the first player, so they're going to have to play down first, except uh, when Gozen is here, the other players go down first. <sighs> all right, so the blue player only has one battle card, and they have to decide if it's worth it. I guess if they lose this battle... Um, then they can move three ships they control to this location. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, it doesn't, hmm, I might have to check 
Well, let's think. First of all, do I want to do this? Probably because this is going to be three, four, five, six, seven. We're at seven. This is two, four, six, ten. That would put them at ten, tying them. So maybe when you're tied, if the battle ends in a tie, the person who went earlier in the battle is the winner. So this would make the red player win. My question is, um, move up to three ships you control to this location after the victor has removed her units. I think that where it's any units that you control, the, that can come from the graveyard, I think. No, no, no. I double-checked. Um, the word control does not include stuff in the graveyard. So, um, I don't think that it's worth it to play this because we don't have any ships to move out. So the blue player is just going to say, no, I'm not going to play any cards. And knowing that, the red player doesn't need to play any cards either. They're going to win the battle. But let's just make sure that the red player doesn't want to play any cards. No, yeah, they're good. Well... How about this? They'll play this card to gain a wealth token. I'm going to add that, and they'll uh, yes, be able to put that back in their hand. Okay, cool. So the red player won that battle. Um, this, why am I dealing, like I'm fidgeting with these cubes, and I don't need to be. Okay, <clears throat> this is already raised all the way up, but we do need to give ourselves five points for the red player. One, two, three, four, five... And these power tokens are going to go away, and these are going to go back to the board. Right there. Okay. Oh, and here's the location card. We already have a three, I think. Yes, we were really wanting that four. Okay, well, let's go to the next battle, see how it goes. But let's not forget our fidgeting cubes. They're here. Guys, it's safe. We're okay. All right, so red player. Look in here. Um, okay, so we've got six to uh six seven nine six to nine so i think the blue player probably or the red player would play it's hard to know because this card would be great if because i've been waiting to use it if the only uh, unit you control at this location we would gain four that would be ten to four but we don't know what the blue player has so maybe we go for five just to be safe so that's what I'm going to do, and because I keep forgetting things like this, I'm going to go ahead and pay the two wealth tokens now. Obviously, in a real game, you wouldn't do that at this exact moment, um, but I'm doing it so I don't forget on camera. The blue player has this one battle card, uh, and then it's the thing with the three. So I think that they're going to play it because it actually seems likely that they could win. So they're going to play this three battle card, and once again, I'm paying the wealth token so that I don't forget right now. All right, then both players reveal. <clears throat> this was 11 for the red player. This was 9, 10, 11, 12. So the blue player just barely squeaks out a victory on that one. The token is already all the way up, so they just gain uh, the five points, putting them at 36. We'll go ahead and discard these cards. Whoa, I made a mess over here. Uh, and then the blue player is going to get all of these cards and things back. They managed to get the, uh, the extra, the fourth thing. Okay, so this is how my handy stuff works. All right, so now we're going to bring all of these back. Slide those over like that. Same thing over here. These need to come off. This guy comes back. And we're going to get lots and lots of points here. So red player is going to get 15 points. So uh, 15 is tough to do, <laughs> which is 15 plus 28. I think it's 43, I think. Fingers crossed. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 22 points. So 1, 2, and then that's going to put them at 58. So we're going to put them here, and I'm going to put a wealth token underneath. Speaking of wealth tokens, I just haven't used the opportunity yet, but there is another use for wealth tokens that I haven't talked about. I'll annotate it, because I should have mentioned it earlier, super sorry, um, but let's quickly talk about it after I reveal the new locations. The first new location is that one. The second one is that one. And we need to pass the first player token. 
Okay, the thing that I haven't talked about yet, and it's just because it always slips my mind. In fact, I think they know that this slips a lot of people's minds because it's in the back of the rule book under reminders. Um, is that anytime you're doing an order, you can boost that order by using a, an order token. So like, for example, I could move an allegiance marker four plus one as five. So that's another use of these wealth tokens that I really truly should have um, utilized before, talked about before at the very least. I've just been using them in so many different ways, but it is worth noting. And again, I'll, I'll try to annotate that somewhere. Really sorry for forgetting that. But the blue player is in luck because they actually needed this thing to move up to and they are controlling this location. So we'll put that up here. And the first thing I want to do before I even do an order is I want to get aggressive. I'm going to spend a point since I have plenty to spend. And I'm actually going to destroy two of my destroyers or my fighters um, because for each of those that I destroy, the other player needs to pay me two wealth or destroy up to two units in their supply. They don't have any wealth, so they're going to have to destroy four, um, four units in their supply. So that should really keep them from flooding the board too much. Now, having done that, who do I want? I think I'm going to just send... <laughs> let's just keep doing the same thing, right? Uh, let's see, we've got two... Well, one, two three, four. Let's go ahead and send four. Again, I could use the three and boost that with this if I wanted to, but why? Uh, and let's go ahead and just send all of these guys over to the planet that the red player is standing on. Um, yes. I mostly feel the need to do this because the blue player like has this marker all the way up on their board already. And so it would suck if the red player was starting to take that down. So let's go ahead and just fill the board nicely like that. The red player isn't controlling anyone or anything right now, so they're just taking their turn. It would be really nice to have some more good battle cards. I'm going to draw three. Hopefully we get a good order is actually what I'm looking for. Okay. Attach this card to a location when a player moves a unit. So we've seen that before. Hmm, that would have been nice before that huge bombardment. Uh, move up to six units that you control. Ooh, that's great. But we don't have many places for them to go. I'm going to need some wealth tokens too. Okay. Oof. i got to keep that in mind. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six, but this one kind of can carry it. All right, I'm going to keep those in mind. Um, we are kind of handing things to the blue player, but not really because at the start of the blue player's turn, he's going to raise this one up by one because that's as far as it can go. And then um, this is already up maximum, so that's going to stay there. Oh yeah, I forgot to discard this for the blue player. Okay, it's discarded now. Uh, once again, kind of low on cards. Can't or don't really want to do this, even though it'd be nice to get those wealth tokens. Um, but let's go ahead and draw three cards. Do you know what? We'll do it just just to prove that I'm not silly. I'm going to draw four. One, two, three, four. All right, what do we got? Order, choose a location. Each of your opponents that controls one or more units at that location must destroy one of her units at that location if she can. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, thought we've seen that before. And the red player could have really used that card. <laughs> it sucks that they don't have it. Okay, battle, move one samurai mech to your, to well, mech you control to this location. Okay, discover, we've seen that. And advanced tech. Gain one power for each unit control of this location. Okay, the blue player is in pretty dang good position right now. They've got a lot of great cards. They've only got five, so that's good. Um, any of these orders? I can't do this order now. Yeah, no, okay, we're good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could do this. Each of your opponents that controls one or more units at the chosen location must destroy one of her units. Do you know what? Here's a really good revenge. They're going to do this order. Uh, we're going to have to destroy one of the ships on the board, but that's okay. So I'm going to discard this. The cost of that is me destroying a fighter. That's fine. I'm going to destroy this one. 
but at this location I'm going to choose and uh, they're going to have to destroy this samurai. So this samurai is going to their graveyard and they're going to have to destroy an action card. So which action card? I'm going to destroy this one because I keep not using it very well. All right, that's discarded. Oh, the lolly. It's going to be tough for red to do well after that. So what I'm thinking, gosh, this is tough. I kind of want to sneak these guys in. I want to let blue think that they're doing awesome. Um, no, no, where was it? Oh, it was this one. That's going to cost three. Maybe what we should do, I'm going to pick up um, four wealth tokens. And uh, let's not do this one just yet. All right. The blue player already has the clans moved all the way up, so they're not gaining anything from controlling those locations. Kind of this weird round, this weird turn happening here. Let me just review. Um, I don't know. Are they going to drop their defenses and gain some wealth? Probably not, but I'm tempted to do it. I wish that I wasn't playing both players. It would be really tempting for the blue player to do this. Um, but instead, what I think that they can do is just pick up some wealth tokens. They're going to need it. Well, that's fighters, fighters. Yeah, they're going to need some wealth tokens for sure. So let's grab two of those. And I think I want the red player to keep being sneaky. I don't want them to bring this out until right before the battles. So they need to save those three wealth tokens. Oh, I need to save those two also for that battle. What I was hoping was to save these three and then I was going to use these two and this one and move an, an allegiance marker uh, four spaces. But instead, why don't we just move an allegiance marker two spaces? I'll hold on to all of those wealth tokens for uh, the battle and that order. And I'm just going to pick one of these wealth tokens that's not going to just move up. Oh, that was one that is moving up this turn. So is this one. Uh, so this one. How about that? Okay, so I'm going to bring that two closer to me. And the blue player's like, okay, still don't want to do that. I think I think if I really did do this and I just destroy those ships, that would just be um, silly, maybe. I, I really want to do this sneak attack. But maybe what they'll do is they'll say, hey, I'm going to spend this wealth token and move that allegiance back up too. So I'm going to discard this and go back up too. For their final one, let's grab one more card, see if it's good for us. Like, the blue player got all those great cards. Choose a location, destroy up to two of the weakest ships at the chosen location, move up to two of the ships you control. Oh, I like that, but I have to do my sneak attack. But this would have been perfect to do at that first location where I could have just destroyed those two ships. But I can't, I, I planned my sneak attack. So, my mega fleet, I'm gonna go ahead and discard these wealth tokens here move up to six units that you control. So I'm just going to discard that and we're just going to bring all of our friends in. Where are we going? Okay, do I want to come here? I just have to win one of these battles. So um, is this a smart thing to do? Um, well, these ships are going to be the weakest. I don't want to stump. Dang it, now I got to think. I think I'm actually gonna, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put these guys here. I don't know how, I don't know how this is really gonna turn out, but at least we can lay claim, I think, for the next round. And I'm gonna bring these guys over here. And I'm putting, I'm moving these two first, okay? And then when this guy comes in, he's gonna stomp that guy out. And that's gonna lead us to our battle. So here's my fiddling cubes. Um, we're starting here. Blue player needs to play a card first. So, uh, these are orders. These are battles. Okay, so move one Samurai Mecha Control to this location. Probably not for this location. Also, oh, I don't have the... I only have one token, so that's not going to work. Gain plus one for each unit you control. Yeah, okay, so they're going to play this card. It's going to cost one wealth token. I am discarding that token now so I don't forget. And that's the blue card. Next up is the red card. So remember, they're probably going to give up on this battle. This is one they don't mind losing. It's the other one that they want to win. So I'm going to go ahead and play uh, this card so that we can gain 
some stuff and we both reveal okay um, I'm gonna have the red player draw a battle card because they are just struggling order move all units from your unit graveyard oh man that would have been amazing I wish I had that earlier okay so I'm just adding that to their hand we'll take this back into our hand and the blue player is gonna win this battle for sure and so uh, discard this now and we get five points and that token stays where it was. So this is gonna go to the blue player along with these, but these tokens are gone ski. Um, oh my gosh, come on. Uh, this goes here, here, yeah. And there's our cubes for this battle. This samurai's involved, so the blue player needs to play their card face up first. And as much as they want to use this card to bring a samurai in to guarantee victory over here, they don't have the wealth for it. So they just say, hey, I can't play a card. Which is perfect for the blue player, or the red player. Because the red player wants to play this plus five. I think that they're going to need it. This is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. To four, five, six. Yes, they're going to need that. Um, and nothing else will really work. Okay, cool. So they play this which means that they're gonna get the victory for this card. That's pretty good news. Uh, let's go move that and get points. And also notice I am discarding those two tokens. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, like that. And we need to find that one. Oh, there it is. It's gonna come down two. It's not a lot, but we've gotta do something because we're hurting here. I'm also discarding that battle card. This is also great news because the red player needed a card with the four symbol. And so we'll pick these up and head back. So that goes there, and these guys come back. We prepare for the next round, so we'll just get all these guys all back from the graveyard. The blue player's doing the same, like that. Let's check points. I think the blue player's gonna get a lot, so we're gonna get 15, so I'm gonna put this under here. So one, two, s seven, <laughs> I cannot do this, hold on. It basically be 15 and then back off two, so that's gonna put us here. And then the blue player is gonna get 23. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my gosh, I'm doing this, am I doing this wrong? No, 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 hold on, oh I just picked, okay, we're okay. I'm okay, you're okay. What did I say 23 is going to put us at 35? I think 35. Sure. And now our final two locations. First location here for the, oh my gosh, what am I doing? For the red player, for the blue player. Oh, this symbol here means you get to choose a marker to move up. We haven't seen that yet, actually. Okay, neat. Okay, let's pass this up to red. And we do have control of one of those locations. Turns out the blue player is currently controlling this token. So it's going to come down one, two, like that. I do think it's going to be tough for the red player to catch up, honestly, if we're being honest here. But we're going to obviously do our best. And I think part of that is a couple of things I have planned. I'm going to need or want uh, some wealth tokens. So we're going to pick up four wealth tokens to start off. Uh, I know that's kind of kind of weak sauce there, but yeah, well, let's just try it out. The blue player is in control here, so they're going to move uh, this blue one and any other one. So kind of tricky here. The, the red player currently is controlling the one that's moving here. So here, blue one. Um, they're going to be moving it down, so I think we want to keep it on our track. So they're just going to move this one up. Obviously, he could choose to move any one of these down. Um, but where the, the red player is struggling hard enough, I don't know that I'm terribly worried about that. But we could pretty quickly and easily take control of uh, the first location where the red player has it so that they can't get that token. The question is, how many units do I want to move? Uh, let's go for three units to move. We're going to move this guy and two ships. So they're going to come here, and when we move um, Motatanada, uh, they destroy one of the weakest ships, so we're going to go ahead and put this in the red player's graveyard. And now the red player no longer has control of this location. 
My original plan was to put this move allegiance and add a bunch of wealth tokens to boost that number uh, and pull that purple one down. But where I'm losing control of that so quickly and easily, I think we've got to get some uh, units on the board. So I think what we will do is, uh, yeah, uh, okay, yeah, let's do this. Oh, and before I do that, I gotta junk a wealth token. Okay, so I am having a hard time deciding. I think we put this guy here and a ship here. Then we'll bring this guy over and put him here. Oh my gosh, why? I'm putting him here. And then I'm going to use this order. Choose a location, destroy up to two of the weakest ships at the chosen, chosen location. So that's going to cost two wealth tokens. I'm spending those. And we'll discard, I'll discard this. And then I'm going to destroy these two ships. So those are just going into the, um, to the blue graveyard like that. And now this ship is worth three. This guy is worth two to the red players six. So yeah, red has control over this location and this one. So that's good news there. Let me review these cards. I can't remember. I thought I had an order. Oh, I do have this order about destroying ships to gain two victory points and three. Ah, do I really want to destroy those? Probably not. With those two ships gone, what we think, I think I'm going to do is I'm going to move four units. Let's take all four of these ships uh, over. And we're going to put them on this planet where they can be worth two points each. And just flood it and take that over. So now the red player has lost control over this spot. But they do still have control here. Remember, we are planning for our final battle. i got to keep that in mind. So the cards the red player has now, we have this order. Uh, move all the units from your graveyard up here. And then that's going to let you do uh, to move two ships. But all of the ship spaces are full right now, unfortunately. And then we have our two battle cards. Um, I don't remember what happened to this card for the blue player. I think I maybe accidentally discarded it at one point. I don't think I was forced to lose it, so my bad there, probably. I can't remember, though. Um, and then I think what I got to do, since we don't... Again, it's going to be our final battle. That's going to be super-duper important. Let's go ahead and draw two cards. I'm not using any wealth tokens to boost that, um, specifically because I don't know if I'm going to need it. Okay, battle gain three. If you lose this battle, oh, move up to three ships you control to this location after the victor. That won't matter anymore because this is the final battle. Uh, and then a supply attack. You may destroy up to two units in your supply. Choose a player for each unit you destroy the chosen. Oh, we've done this before. Um, yeah, well, this would only force the other player to lose wealth, which they don't have, or destroy units in their supply, and they don't have anything in their supply. So that order is actually not helpful, unfortunately. The blue player has a healthy uh, lead and control over here. So they're going to pump that up like that. And they haven't got much. And I know I keep checking these cards obnoxiously. That's just because there is time passing between the stuff that we're doing. And it's easy for me to forget which cards we have. So the question is... Do I need or want wealth tokens and two victory points enough that I'm willing to destroy three ships from out on the board since I don't have any ships in the supply? In this situation, we are at 13 or 15. Let's count. I should have this memorized by now, but we have uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13. So can I afford to destroy six points? Uh, that might be cutting it a little too close. That would be uh, two, four, five, six, seven. Seven to six. I don't know that that's really the right uh, call to make. So what I think I'll do instead is I'm going to <laughs> put a little salt on the wound of the red player. And we're going to lower this by two. The red player is still controlling this. So they're going to lower that by two. And I'm really not super satisfied with my cards, so I'm going to draw one more card here. Propaganda. As an order, move all clan markers on all of your opponent's branches of the Alliance up to one track. Oh, crap. 
I am shy a wealth token, or else I totally would do that, because that would, I think, make the blue player earn five points less when it comes time for that. But I can't afford it. Dang it. Um, so... We'll just discard this one and be sad that I am one token shy. The blue player will go ahead. They That's already all the way up. So they're just going to raise this one and try to win that other battle and get that thing up too. And for their one, do we need for battle? Oh, crap. And we're going to need two. We would need two wealth tokens to make that work. We don't have any wealth tokens at all. So not really worth grabbing another one. Let's just move an allegiance marker. Either one, any of these will work. We just wanna, we wanna make the red player feel bad about themselves, apparently. Time for battle. Here's our cubes. Uh, blue player needs to place first. Uh, they don't, they can't play anything. Uh, they have these two order cards and this one they can't afford. So they just have to pass which means that the red player doesn't have to play anything down. They can just win this battle, and so they're going to get five points and pull this marker down twice. So bring that down two, and they get up to 18 points. Then these go back uh, there. Let's move the battle over here. Oh, that's too far. Okay, move the battle over here. Same thing, the blue player can't play anything down. The red player knows what they have to do in order to uh, take this. This was 13 to six, so they need seven more points, which is not going to happen. Uh, they could play this one for free. Uh, that won't matter. That doesn't matter. All right, they'll just play this one down and the blue player will get a victory on this planet. So they're going to get five points, putting them at 40, and they'll move uh, this one up one. And then this gets discarded. That stays here. All of these head over to the blue player, like that. Oh, Nelly. Okay. There we go. Almost there. Time to do some final scoring. The red player is going to get 3 plus 4 plus 5, 12 points. Uh, that's going to put them here at 30, so 80. And then <laughs> the blue player, 1, 2, 3, 4, so 22 points. So that will put them at uh, this, whatever that is, 102. That's a lot. And the last little bit of scoring is just checking how many um, icons you have here. So we have... Uh, the one, two, three, and four, so that means that the red player is going to be getting nine more points. And same with the blue player, they have a one, two, three, and four, so they're also going to get nine points. So not that it really matters, but we will do it to be official, and we're going to put that there. All right, so that was Starship Samurai. So just a couple of quick final thoughts informally. Um, I want to I want to say before I say critical things that I really really do like this game. Um, I think that it is super simple. Um, it takes area control in a direction that I like a lot, where uh, the area control is changing. I feel like with a lot of area control games, once someone has control of an area, it can feel too frustrating or too tough to really take it over. But I love that balancing mechanism of you win this area, your stuff goes away, and the losers huh, are left over to defend. I like that. I like um, the uh, I like the different powers for the different ships. I can only assume that in a future expansion that there will be different starting ships or the ability to change ships, kind of the same way here. And I'm just assuming that because, you know, everybody starts with the exact same two ships here. It almost seems silly that we needed a full card for those or like that these are interchangeable or removable. So I think that this game is so ripe with expandability and I'm really excited about that. Um, and I hope that they do. Fingers crossed, right? Um, I, I really like this kind of mechanism here where you're you're influencing these clans and anytime you move a clan you're either, you're either pulling their influence down or pushing it up your track, that kind of a thing. I enjoy that quite a bit. 
and even though I was terrible at explaining it, my bad, um, I really like the, the versatility of the wealth tokens. I like that it's just this one token that you can use to either boost your orders or you can use them to do your stuff with your cards, um, or you can use them to boost your weak little fighter jets. I think that that's really cool, really simple, and makes this an approachable game for tons of people. Now, having said that, I hesitantly made a two-player game, and I did, like, the reason why I say I did that hesitantly, I, I was thinking about doing a three-player game, but I really didn't have the table space um, to where I could do this recording very easily. But also, I knew that I was going to have a hard time with the battles. Like, I, this was really came down to the battles. For me, playing two different players and keeping the battles fair and playing cards that I really thought the players would play was kind of a tricky thing for me to do. Not as tricky as I thought it would be, but the thought of having to do that for three players really scared me off of uh, playing a three-player game for this channel. Um, and I'm saying that because I think that this game is weakest at two players. There is a variant where this deck is comprised of two of each kind of card. So there is a variant where each player uh, takes one of those cards, you make two different decks. Um, I just didn't really want to do that sorting, and, and it's just a variant, so I just stuck with this, the normal way to play it. Um, and I don't feel like that does enough to um, balance the game. Uh, for two players. I really wish, it's almost like um, there's this game called Ethnos that I like a lot, where it's an area control game, but in, in that game, they they make a big change to the rules that really, in my opinion, strengthens the game to where a two-player game is almost stronger than the other player counts in that game. I really wish that there was some big twist in a two-player game, and I have been racking my brain all week trying to think of what that twist would be or to offer a suggestion, and I don't really have one. Um, but I just wish that things were tighter in this two-player game, or in this game as a two-player game. Um, so I don't know if that would be that, like, you would block off two of the spots on the planet, or I don't know if that would be just some twist. I don't know. I Any thoughts or ideas that you guys have, I would love to hear it. The other thing about the two-player game that I don't love is I think it goes two rounds too long. Now, the way that the location deck is created, it's created so that everybody has an equal number of turns being the first player, which is great. I love it. It's brilliant. Um, so in a three-player game, I think each player starts each round three times, I think. Don't quote me on that. But it's something, or maybe every, I can't remember, uh, let, looking at the numbers, you have all of the blank cards plus one um, dotted card. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine cards, three different planets. Yeah, so each player actually gets to be first player one time. In a four-player game, uh, you have all of the cards in there, which would be, I'm doing some math in real life, I think 16 cards, and so you use four, yeah, 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 so then in that game, also, each player is starting player one time, but in a two-player game, you're, it's so, it's, it feels too long, I wish that maybe what you did is that you took out two of the three dot cards, or something like that, I just wish there was one way to shorten the gameplay, because uh, I think that part of it is that a two-player game feels too long for me. So again, I think it's weakest at two players, but I think it's really a great game at three and four. Um, I think the pacing is right, it's, it snips along, it goes quickly, um, and, the, and you saw with a two-player game, and this has happened both times I played a two-player game, you end up with a stack at the top of the track for one player and a stack at the top of the track for the other player. And part of that was my strategy. Um, obviously, I could have been spending more time putting uh, tokens up here and moving allegiance markers and stuff like that. I could have really been fighting for those, and maybe the red player should have been. Um, it's just hard to do that because you know if you're not putting units down here and preparing for battles, then whatever you manipulate up here, the other player is going to just adjust it with the cards. 
I don't know. That's that. So yeah, I think the two-player game's a little bit weak. It's the weakest, and it goes a little long. I think this game is a truly amazing three- and four-player game. I love it, love it, love it a lot. So that is what I have to say. Those are my thoughts. I think it's an excellent game. I would love to see a tweak for the two-player game and things like that. So Having said that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this video rendering and start making a teaching tips video. Um, it's a beautiful game. I appreciate Isaac and his design a lot for that, so kudos to you. Uh, thank you guys for watching this. If you're interested in either watching this game set up, hopefully you did that at the beginning, or taught or seeing my teaching tips, click on the link in the bottom of this video in the description. All right, we'll see you later. Okay, bye. Oh my gosh, wait one second. I had the camera removed to go upload and then I forgot the biggest complaint. I just wanted to say really fast, Plaid Hat, how did you not give us snappers for the samurai? To me, having colored bases is crucial um, and so important. I could see why you wouldn't write these things on here and I don't know in expansions if there's gonna be ways to change which samurai you have with other players so I can totally see that. But come on, colored, that would have been a thing. I should have said that in my rant about two-player games. Anyway, that's it. Okay, I'm really going. Look, I'm going to wave. Bye!